Welcome to our lab on configure file and disk encryption. Our first exercise is to be configure an EFS in a work group. Let's move over to our Plab SA device, our standalone server. Let's open Windows Explorer and launch the command prompt from Windows Explorer. We're going to generate a self-signed certificate via the cipher command. Enter the password. Confirm the password. And our certificate is created successfully with the .cr and dot PFX extensions. Let's exit out of the command prompt. Let's go back to server manager. We're going to go to tools, local disk security policy. Let's expand public keys policies. Then select encrypting file system. Right click on encrypting file system and select add data recovery agent click next browse folders let's go to C users administrator I had to go to PowerShell to run the cipher command again so it looks like now we we should be able to to find our, our file And yes, indeed, the administrator file is here. Let's go ahead and open it. Let's click yes to add the certificate. Next and finish. Notice the administrator self-signed certificate is now added to the local security policy. So we're still working in our standalone server, Plav SA as 01 in a work group. Our next task is to create a user account for testing EFS recovery. So we're inside server manager. Let's go to tools, computer management, local users and groups, users, right mouse click, create a new user. I've entered the information for student1 and the password. We'll go ahead and create that. And we have our student1 account for testing. We're going to make student1 a member of administrators. So we select it, right mouse click, go to properties, member of, add, start typing administrator. We've um, added the student one account to administrator. We'll go ahead and click OK. We're going to sign out of our standalone server right now. Okay. Let's go ahead and log in as student one. open up file explorer open up drive C we're going to create a folder called EFS dash student one let's go inside that folder let's make a new text document and we're going to call this confidential. And let's put some text inside of it. Let's go ahead and save it. 
Let's go into the EFS student one folder properties. Click on advanced. Let's select encrypt contents to secure data. Click OK and OK. On the change confirmations, let's click OK. So the green text on the document here indicates that the document is now encrypted. So our next task is to verify EFS encryption via the command line. So I'll go ahead and open up an instance of PowerShell. Let's change the directory. Enter the cipher command. Notice that E is appended on the EFS uh, student folder. This indicates that the folder is encrypted. Next exercise is to decrypt the EFS student one folder via the command line. So we're still in PowerShell and we'll go ahead and enter the command. All right, so I've entered the command cipher D front slash uh, S semicolon C backslash EFS student one front slash A. And it is being decrypted now. The summary here shows that one file or directory was decrypted. It's successful. We're going to go ahead and sign out of student one right now. Let's go ahead and log back into PLAB SA01 to perform task four using EFS recovery agent. So we're logged in as our standard administrator right now. Let's go back to our C drive and find our EFS student file. Let's right mouse click on it select open right mouse click on confidential select open notice we get the access denied error let's go back to the folder type in MMC let's click on file add and remove snap in select certificates Add. The default of my user account is fine. Click finish and click OK. In the council, let's expand certificates. Right click on personal, all task, and import. Let's click next on the welcome page and enter the directory for our PFX file. Directory is entered. Let's go ahead and click Next. Let's enter a password for our private key. Let's click Next. We will leave these defaults for the certificate store and click Next and Finish. Notice that a certificate for admin is now available. We should now be able to open the encrypted file. In this exercise, we're going to configure BitLocker encryption. We're going to move over to our domain controller to do the work. We are now in PLAB DC01 in the Practice Labs domain. Let's go to File Explorer, open up our C drive, 
then create a folder called keys. Right mouse click on it, go to properties, sharing, advanced sharing, click on share this folder, permissions, and allow everyone full control. Click OK and OK and close. Let's head back over to Server Manager and go into Group Policy. Expand the forest, expand the domains. Right mouse click on Practice Labs domain and select Create a GPO on this domain and link it here. We will call this one BitLocker Policy. Let's click OK. If we expand the practicelabs.com domain, the BitLocker Policy now shows up. Let's right mouse click on it and select Edit. So right now we're in Policies, Administrative Templates, Windows Components, BitLocker Drive Encryption, operating system drives. Right click on require additional authentication at startup and choose edit. We're going to enable this policy and also verify that the allow BitLocker without a compatible TPM is checked off and we'll click OK. Next, we will right click on configure use of passwords for operating systems drives. We'll go ahead and enable this and click OK. Next, let's edit choose how BitLocker password protected operating system drives can be recovered. Let's enable it. And let's make sure the following three are checked off. Allow data recovery agent, save BitLocker recovery information to ADDS for operating system drives. And click OK. We could go ahead and uh, get out of the group policy management editor now. And we're back in group policy management. Let's select the BitLocker policy. We'll click do not OK. Let's go down to security filtering. Select authenticated users. We're going to remove them from this. And we're going to add computer groups to this. Select computers. Let's add plab dm01. And click OK. We're going to add another computer here. Click on object types to allow computer. And the next one is going to be plab win 8. So plab dm01 and plab win 8 will now use BitLocker policy GPO. Let's open up an instance of PowerShell. We're going to do a GP update front slash force. Let's switch over to our Plab DM01 box. We're going to run PowerShell and do a GP update front slash boot. and GP update front slash force we're gonna go ahead and install uh, BitLocker
Alright, BitLocker is installed on Plab DM01. I'm going to do a uh, restart. So in this next task, we're going to enable BitLocker on our Windows client. Let's log into our Windows 8 box. Let's open up File Explorer. Right mouse click on this PC. and select manage let's click on disk management select drive C alright let's select the unallocated um, disk here um, right mouse click select new simple volume and we'll just go ahead and keep all the defaults for it and just next through. So now we have a new volume E. Let's go back to File Explorer. Select Drive E, right mouse click, and select Turn On BitLocker. We're going to select the Use Password option. We've entered our password. Click Next. Our recovery options will actually save it to a file and we will save it to our keys directory on our domain controller and start encrypting. Let's right mouse click on drive E again and this time select manage BitLocker. Notice BitLocker shows as being on. Let's go ahead and restart the computer. Alright, we're logged back into our Windows 8 box. Let's go to File Explorer. Notice that we, we now have the, the BitLocker icon on Drive E. Let's right mouse click on it and select Open. And notice that this drive is not accessible. Since we have the credential to get in, we could right mouse click on it and select Unlock Drive. We would enter our password. and the drive is now unlocked. Be sure to subscribe, like, comment and share this video and thank you for watching.